Hello neighbors, it's Brad here at eTrailer and today we're taking a look at the 2022 Kia Carnival. And this is a really exciting SUV slash minivan multi-purpose vehicle. So for your multi-purpose needs, installing a trailer hitch is going to be great like this Kurt Class 3 trailer hitch. So here's the hitch installed on the Carnival and you're going to see it is an exposed cross tube. So you can see the actual whole hitch hanging down. But it is a nice black powder coat finish over its steel construction, which means that it's sturdy and it's also going to hold up to the elements over time, keeping that black and not rusty and corroded. You're going to see it's a two inch by two inch receiver tube opening, and that's going to be awesome for a bunch of different accessories, whether it be your bike racks, cargo carriers, or maybe even a small trailer. Now you also have a plate style safety chain loop, and these loops are, I can fit my four fingers in, which is great for when you're hooking up larger hooks like a clevis style here that's no problem as well as your standard size loop which also you have plenty of room to work with and lots of angle to work with as well now you're also going to see the standard 5 8 hitch pin hole and this is going to be necessary to put your accessories in place and make sure they don't come out so you will need a hitch pin it doesn't come with the hitch itself but we do have those here at eTrailer. And also if your accessories are something that you may keep on for a long time and you don't wanna worry about those disappearing, you can actually get a locking style here as well. With something like the Carnival, it's great to be able to do a lot of different things and different adventures with the family. Now, sometimes that can involve pulling a trailer. So this hitch right here can hold 4,000 pounds for a gross trailer weight and that's going to be the weight of the trailer plus the accessories loaded up your tongue weight is actually 600 pounds which is the downward pressure on the inside of the receiver tube openings now something else i should point out is you want to check the vehicle's owner's manual to see what the vehicle is actually capable of and that way you're not overdoing it so between the weight rating on the hitch and the weight rating on the vehicle you're going to want to take the lower of those two numbers and go with that to stay safe now, a few important measurements to take note of when looking at your accessories or looking to purchase accessories and load them up is gonna be measuring from the center of the hitch pin hole to the furthest point of the rear fascia. And that's gonna put us right at about four inches. Now that's gonna be important to note because when you load your accessories in, they can get pretty close to the fascia. So you're gonna to wanna to make sure to measure that to keep your rear bumper and fascia from getting damaged or any of your accessories making contact with your vehicle. Another important measurement is gonna be from the top of the receiver tube opening to the ground, and that's gonna put us right at 11 inches. Keep that in mind while loading up your accessories and driving on hills. Now the install of the hitch is pretty straightforward. You could probably do it in your driveway with minimal tools. You may need to trim some plastic, that's up to you. But I'm here to walk you through all those steps. So now let's take a look at that installation. So we're gonna be on our driver's side first and you're gonna see this underbody panel. Now there's gonna be six plastic push pins that you're gonna to wanna to remove and you're gonna to wanna to keep those in a safe spot. That way you have them later for installation. A flathead screwdriver works well to pop these out. And just simply put in the little slotted gap there and then a quick twist and they should pop out. Now, if you're looking for the sixth one, there is one tucked back here, and that's also gonna leave this one up here to where you don't actually have to remove it. So make sure you have the correct pins actually removed. You'll know pretty quickly once you try to pull the plastic panel if it's hung up on any other ones, but it should, well, just like this one. Let's pop that, and then it comes down. So now our next step is going to be dropping the exhaust bracket hangers here. And the best bet is get a long screwdriver or a pry bar and wedge it between that rubber and the metal hanger itself. If you're having trouble, you can spray a little bit of penetrating oil um, and that'll help lube it up to kind of get these to pop off. If that top one's giving you trouble, that's no problem. You can use the bottom one as well, as long as you get the isolator off the exhaust.
Now we're going to go ahead and repeat. Now there's going to be one more exhaust hanger that we're going to need to remove from the bracket. And before we do that, it's nice to support your exhaust. I'm using just a strap here and that's going to kind of hold it up. Now if you're doing this on the ground in your driveway, you can set a block of wood. The main thing is you don't want this exhaust hanging down and putting stress on the rest of the muffler. So we'll go ahead and put it on our little suspension arms here. And that's gonna kind of create a cradle for it. So now that we have this supported, we can actually just pry underneath here and that should pop off pretty easily. So now with the help of a friend, I actually went down and lowered that little strap there on our exhaust to give us a little more space. You're gonna to wanna to grab your bolt and a conical tooth washer. Now you can see the teeth on the washer, that's gonna to face towards the hitch and make contact with the metal. So go ahead and feed this into place. Now on the passenger side, you'll see that you do have to kind of route it over the exhaust. And then once you raise that in place, have your hardware ready. So you can hand tighten it into one hole. And once you get that hand tightened in, that's gonna hold that in place. And now you can help with the other side. And we'll be able to go back and put the rest of our hardware in. So now we're gonna go back with our three quarter inch socket. We're gonna tighten these all up. Now on the exhaust side, it's gonna get a little tricky. So maybe using an impact is not ideal for that. You may have to go to a ratchet and smaller socket. And we don't need to crank these down because we're gonna go back with a torque wrench and torque them to the manufacturer's spec. But just to kind of get it up into place. And we're gonna go ahead and tighten these three. Looks like my best bet here is gonna be a three quarter inch socket on a ratchet here and it is a swiveled one here. So that's gonna allow me to get that angle to kind of tighten this up. So go ahead and get these all tightened down. So now that we have everything tightened down, we're gonna go back with a torque wrench and we're gonna set it to the manufacturer's recommendations in the instruction manuals. Now, if you don't have a torque wrench, we do have those here at eTrailer or you can rent them at an auto parts store. But it is very crucial to make sure you have the proper torque settings and that way your hitch is gonna stay in place and be nice and secure. I'm gonna go ahead and repeat this process on the rest of the bolts until they're all torqued down to specification. Now on your passenger side, your exhaust still should be loose from being off the hangers. So you're gonna to wanna to move that out of the way to gain access to your bolts. So now that we have everything torqued to spec, we're gonna go ahead and put our exhaust hangers back on. And it should just kind of slip in there. Now we can go ahead and remove our strap. Now our final step before being able to hit the road and use our hitch is going to be trimming this plastic. Now you can opt to leave this off. It shouldn't cause any issues, but if you want that OEM appearance still, what I like to do is actually kind of do a test fit just by mocking it up and seeing where we need to trim. And that way we're not cutting more than we need to. We can always cut off more. So I'll go ahead and make some marks here where the hitch is and I'll start trimming. So I've taped off our area per the instructions as to what to cut off. Um, and yours may vary slightly, but this will get you pretty close. And again, I always try to mock it up and make sure that it does match. I'm using tape here just as a visual cue for myself. Now, if you have snips, uh, like tin snips, you can cut through this plastic pretty well. Um, also a Dremel or a rotary tool works really well. I'm using an angle grinder. So 
once you have your plastic actually cut, you can go back with either a file or just the edge of a blade and kind of get these burrs off just to make it a little bit cleaner. So I used the measurements from the instructions and I did find that I had to do a little bit of extra trimming just to kind of get it to fit in this notch here. So that's kind of normal, um, but let's go ahead and we'll put our tabs in. And now, since we did cut out one of the mounting points, you're only gonna need five of the plastic fasteners as opposed to the six that we started with. But once you have that in place, go ahead and press that in, make sure it's through both, and then pop it in place. Go ahead and do that with the other four. Now with our plastic panel installed, that's gonna do it for the hitch install. So you're ready to hook up your accessories or trailer and get moving. And that was a look at the Kurt Class 3 trailer hitch on a 2022 Kia Carnival. Thanks for watching.